Hi all, let's have a look at another amazingly instructive game from the TSEX Season 17 Super Final. The current Super Final, by the way, is underway in the Qualification League, so start following it at tsechess.com. Brilliant tournament. So anyway, from TSEX 17, round 84, Leela was white against Stockfish. So E4 from Leela, and the opening set is in the Sicilian defence. And we have this early queen b6, which drives the knight back. a6, knight c3, d6. So we have a kind of Neindorf position. Here, queen d2, bishop e7, both sides castle. So it's opposite side castling scenario. Very exciting. And this is the end of the book given to both. So uh, when Stockfish was playing with the white pieces, uh, it kind of mauled Leela. So how would Leela treat this position with the white pieces? F3, knight e8, we have h4, queen c7, bishop g5. So that rules out potentially, you know, a crude, a cruder g4, g5 plan you know, for h5, g6. You might want to try and open up lines sometimes. So very, very interesting, bishop g5, b5. But now just taking out that dark square bishop h5, it seems Leela is content to install, rather casually, a form pawn. So even though it's opposite side castling, Leela is trying to use the chessboard as a kind of long-term storage device, uh, really taking uh, Steinitz's idea of accumulating uh, small advantages to a really new level, really treating chessboard as storage of these advantages. It is a great asset in many end games and even in the middle game it will be a mating net resource quite often but does it conflict with one of the primary ideas quite often in opposite side castling games which is to open up lines it's blocked the rook this block is rook is really not influencing h7 now or the h file squares it could have been useful surely for that so some controversy here perhaps knight d4 bishop b7 a3, knight, a5, bishop, d3, queen, c7, rook, he1, rook, c8, knight, b3, again, knight, c4, bishop takes c4, b takes, knight, d4. Here, uh, there's a major kind of structural turning point of the game. Uh, Stockfish, uh, for whatever tactical reasons, perhaps worried about some stuff like f4, f5, plays quite a committal move here e5 you can see that d5 square has been compromised and there's a backward d6 pawn there's no pawns to support that so it would have to be supported by pieces these are quite abstract concepts uh the backward pawn and pawns not going backwards and, and strategic holes so it's sometimes i believe been referred to as the bolslavsky hole on d5 bolslavsky was apparently running some experiments in the sin in defense uh, playing with uh, the hole or against the hole uh, as as part of research, some sort of chess research, apparently. So the Bolzlewski hole, d5. Uh, we have rook b8, queen e3, f6. So Stockfish is committing pawns. Uh, the problem with these committed pawns is perhaps you could argue the pawns don't go backwards, but when they're fully committed, maybe that ripens the possibility of exchange sacrifices later, because they really could be fragmented and fixed targets. If they're fully committed, they're, they're no longer a moving target. So could they just be picked off like ripe apples once they're fully committed? That's one of the dangers as well on that, on that range when you start pushing pawns. Um, by the way, I think the quotation from the previous video is still relevant. Seize the outpost, it meant e5, uh, with your knight and you can go to sleep. I think you can do the same, you can argue the same thing with a knight on d5. So that was by Savelli Tartagar. Having a great entrenched knight in a strategically important square like d5 or e5, I think helps to make the position easier to play. So we have uh, knight d1. Queen c6, knight e c3, knight c7, queen e2, rook c8, and the knights are really going around this d5 hole quite elegantly. But black also can be a nuisance here for a moment by putting a knight in on d4. 
and the knight goes back. And we have a lot of playing around here. Uh, so again, though, the pawns, they're not yet fully committed, you know, locking into the opponent's pawns. You can see that pawn move. It's not going to go backwards. It's not yet fully committed, but there's still time <laughs> for that. Uh, here, at this moment, something quite interesting happens. Knight b6 and black decides to give up that bishop. And you might wonder why here, because that is the only protector against the Bolzlavsky hole. Note also by the knight moving, this pawn is ready sometimes to kick this knight away from d4. So black played bishop takes d5. You might wonder why on earth was this played? In my investigation, as an example, bishop c6, uh, knight takes c4 seems as though it could be safe enough, even though there seems to be a lot of pressure here. White could employ an exchange stack at this moment and get an advantageous position. If you know black has to, um, uh, well, there's there's lots of possibilities like queen e6 if ed as well. So yeah, black gives up back the exchange and that's winning for white. So there are great possibilities. So bishop takes d5, knight takes. So we have that Bolzlavsky hole, and white's ready to kick the counterpart knight away from d4, and does so immediately. And the queens come off, and we have here a position which seems like this is the sort of position Leela would employ quite long term torture. Yeah, this pawn falls off uh, because actually it's it's also a double attack on d6 and c4. So Stockfish has uh, for some reason felt this, yeah, it's it's been compromised. So knight e3, but maybe it felt that the blockade that it has is strong enough to withhold this position. So it is uh, officially a pawn down. But there's a lot of work potentially to do. So g4 seems to clamp down on f5. So a, a4, the, four, the pawn is fully committed now. Well, until this pawn's moved out of the way. But it's a f more of a fixed target as well. As well as losing its reversibility, it's kind of a more fixed target, which I believe generally means you know, sometimes if there's an exchange sacrifice for a rook for a knight, you know, these pawns could fall off. Pawns like that could fall off as a consequence. So anyway, rook e2, rook cb7. We're at move 49 now. And uh, yeah, we get a quite a lot of shuffling now, which is almost quite off-putting to try and cover this game. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I believe it would be off-putting to... A large number of YouTubers would never cover this game because of this high-level shuffling. What's also interesting, I watched the live stream and Leela really was living off the five-second increment. They might be changing the five-second increment, it seems, to a ten-second increment in uh, in the current season. I believe in the Super Final it will be a ten-second increment. But it was kind of it did provide some tension and drama if Leela was going to crack up like in a previous round and start sacrificing pawns or something. Uh, so this is at move 86. And yeah, I, I think a lot of people believe Lee wasn't going to be able to break through here at any point. It seems as though Black's got a great hold on the position. Uh, Stockfish saying, have your Bolzlavsky hole. What can you do with it? I'm just sitting here protecting d6 with my king as well. It's a backward pawn on the d-file but so what and it carries on and on and on and on and yes you perhaps you can use Leela games as a form of meditation here as they just seem to carry on and on but is there something brewing up with knight c2 nope the knight goes back to e3 the knight goes to f5 it seems to be exploring every square but what's this this is a committal move c4 if rook takes then d pawn goes so knight c5 Okay, rook c1, rook c7, and then it carries on and on a little bit. And I've got a marker in my notes when to wake up for me, so I can tell you when to wake up. Coming up, it carries on. And you see that there's pressure on that. You could call that quite committed pawn. It's locked in with the a3. But look, this is, this is a situation where, you know, there's the possibility of an exchange act to immediately take out this guy now if that guy's taken out then these guys are liberated 
to a greater extent as well so wake up here after king a2 the king's also improved itself is there going to be an exchange sacrifice yes the exchange sack is played here so this is a consequence maybe you know an extension of pawns don't go backwards pawns also reach a, a kind of fixed target status right for exchange sacks you could argue so the exchange sack played here taking up this pawn and there's a bit of fragmentation this pawn is away from the other guys there's this dangerous form pawn which is only two steps away from being a queen uh, so is there enough for the exchange it's two pawns for the exchange I think most over the ball players would be very comfortable with the white pieces here with this massive knight on d5 uh, so I, I said it it kind of looked strategically dead during the uh, the live uh, broadcast but uh, I think there's this idea that stockfish can withhold such positions uh, generally even if they look bad if there's nothing concrete to really exploit the advantage then you know the, the suggestion is prove it uh, so rook a4 is played here if rook b8 then it seems as though uh, because rook a4 seems to invite rook b3 so you might think well isn't that a kind of tactically committal decision to allow white to play rook b3 because that's an inroad into the black position so I thought this is a point of interest here if rook b8 was played trying to stop rook b3 it seems white can play for example like this can get the pawns blockade the b file and put the knight into f5 and try and make inroads slowly with the rook for example a bit like this as an example where eventually uh, we get this kind of position with knight f5 if taken there so that's poison yeah there's no way of avoiding knight f5 checkmate so if black doesn't take that pawn uh, critically if black doesn't take that pawn we get this situation where that h pawn might come off the board and with that it's really starting to be a massive advantage for white and these pawns are all fragmented by this point so that's 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 a slow disaster scenario for black so anyway rook a4 was played so it allows this rook b3 pardon me so we have rook takes c4 and okay check and now rook takes h7 yes so it's back to being two pawns down and also there's a very dangerous pass pawn now it seems rook c1 we have rook c7 and now rook check and now rook takes f6 which takes the legs out of these pawns these are all like fragmented pawns now so it is gigantic compensation now for the exchange white seems to be absolutely winning now these these are really fragmented pawns ready to fall off like ripe apples so uh, rook b8 okay it's looking to take on b2 check and we have king b1 the rook moves knight c4 protecting b2 now check rook f5 yep yeah, starting to hit these uh, fragmented pawns uh, and they're not going anywhere they are fixed targets really at the moment most of them knight d3 hits the rook and protects b2 there against that hitting the rook rook takes c5 is check yes it looks as though white has far too many pawns now for the exchange far too many these pawns start getting pushed so this position yeah knight d4 if taking then e7 there's no easy way it looks of stopping this pawn so black would have to give back the exchange so uh, yeah that's afforded by the position knight f5 e7 yeah the black rooks are really stuck now they're not even coordinating for any form of counter attack so black's just pretty passive just waiting for white to improve the possession without any real counterplay now uh, so uh, we have the pawns being pushed and white's going to be even more material up now converting <laughs> a rook under promotion and the rest is just 
easy peasy it would seem so here actually the game was resigned for stockfish so by contrast to stockfish's win in this opening variation Leela pursued form pawn strategy which is part more holistically of it seems a longer term very patient using the chessboard as a kind of storage medium really storing very long-term advantages and also the torture is also kind of getting black to store fixed targets so it's not just the form pawn but encouraging fixed targets choosing the right time to celebrate the uh, Bolzlavsky hole with an exchange sacrifice to immediately munch one of the key fixed targets and then it's it's just you know the black pawns later start falling apart once f6 has been taken especially it leaves basically three pawn islands which are very difficult to to hold up once those get taken out then white has loads of past pawns and it's just overwhelming after that so it seems to be a story this game of patient accumulation of advantages storage and accumulation of advantages uh, and getting the opponent to have more fixed targets not just pawns not going makers but absolutely fixed targets to pick off later via exchange sack uh, yeah so Leela was really playing on the increment uh, and there was some uncertainty would it lead to a Leela self-destruct like in a previous round but it didn't on this occasion so it's intriguing intriguing actually that was uh, for Leela fans, and that was the only self-destruct game, one of the earlier rounds where Leela had severe time pressure. and um, But Leela didn't have a strategic uh, square in the centre to play with, though. That was a little bit more tricky, that situation, where Leela lost. So here, with that strategic square, maybe Leela fans can be reassured Leela's not going to crack up in time pressure. It was a very, very interesting game from that kind of uh, living on the increments perspective as well okay so uh, I hope you enjoyed it a little bit got something out of it and if you want to challenge me for a game kingscrusher.tv if you register that I'll be able to invite you for a game later or bit.ly slash chess world uh, there's a suave chat forum at kingscrusher tv slash discord any cute games or even your own best games actually there's a new room if you want to post your own best games <laughs> they might be featured on the channel you never know if that if you if they're wonderful enough <laughs> bitly slash leela chess uh bitly slash stockfish chess there's also things like bitly slash magnus colson chess if you want to check out my playlist okay comments questions like shares appreciated thanks so much